that going to be argued? Okay. Good morning, Council. Step right up. All right. Thank you. Good morning, May. Please the court. John Barce for the Commonwealth Berkshire District. The Commonwealth respectfully requests that this court reverse the uh, motion judge's allowance of the defendant's motion to dismiss the crime of cultivation of marijuana. Um, the crime of cultivation of marijuana has always been a separate and distinct offense from the crime of simple possession of marijuana under uh, Section. 34, and it has never been a quantity uh, requirement uh, similar to uh, possession with the it's, intent. It's in the same subsection as possession with intent, manufacture, all that, right? That's correct, uh, 32CA. And um, do you need to go beyond Commonwealth versus Kiefner? Yeah. I, I would agree that uh, Kiefner controls uh, this case um, for the reasons stated in Kiefner that. Uh, when the voters um, voted to decriminalize possession of one ounce or less of marijuana, uh, the examples that they set forth under Section 32L uh, were merely examples of how um, decriminalization would not repeal or modify the existing law under Section 32A, and um, that list was not exhaustive. But Kiefner makes a certain sense in terms of there would have been a gap uh, as to distribution if uh, if we looked at um, uh, the statute in the way that the defendant was proposing at that point. But here, doesn't doesn't it mean that um, if we follow the Kiefner line of thought on this, that the only way people who are it's, it's not uh, criminal to possess less than one ounce of marijuana. But we're saying that the only way you can get it is by buying it from somebody else because you can't grow your own. You can't grow your own small quantities of it for your own use. Correct. Doesn't that strike you as an odd uh, consequence? Because we're saying really we have to keep the uh, purveyors of this stuff in business. Well, if I, hopefully I'll, I'll answer this correctly, uh, but cultivation ha has always been a, a separate offense. Well, it's always been because to cultivate marijuana has always been, nobody was, could legally have marijuana. Mm -hmm. So you, you, there would be no legal purpose for cultivating <clears throat> it, and cultivating it is so tied into, it's, it's akin to manufacturing other kinds of drugs because marijuana is different because you grow it. Um, but if now there's a legal, well, it's decriminalized, a non-criminal mm -hmm. uh, ability to have it and pay a fine for the use of it, um, that's no longer true. I mean, it sort of changes what you could grow it for. You could grow it for your own use. Well, I, I would respectfully disagree that you cannot um, grow it for your own use. Um, you can grow it for your own use? That, that, that you cannot grow it. Cannot grow it for your own use. For your own use. Uh, because I think when the voters uh, decriminalized possession of one ounce or less, they envisioned an individual who um, merely possessed a small plastic bag, one ounce or less. Who got and, it from somebody had, else. You're saying they had to envision getting it from somebody else. They had to for, buy it on the, for, um, on the mark, in the market. But I don't <clears> think they envisioned actually growing it um, you know, in their own house, in their backyard. Um, from my experience in, in the district court, when, when I was a district court prosecutor for three years, the crime of cultivation, it was just not that common versus the crime of simple possession. We, we often saw you know, an individual with the plastic baggie and the user paraphernalia, the pipe, <coughs> possibly a bong to, to smoke the marijuana. Well, isn't it? I mean, it's not. Um, it, it is a crime, and lots of people have been um, convicted of large-scale cultivation. 
right? Right. So I mean, there's a reason for this and for it falling into the statute, which speaks to trafficking, lar manufacturing. Those are all large-scale enterprises of purveying of what um, is, in some respects, still illegal conduct. It's just not illegal to have less than an ounce. So it, it looked in that context. What you're saying is that the voters wanted to continue the illegal enterprise, make sure it stayed alive, and you're nodding. Well, they they wanted to continue um, to make sure that growing is a crime, possession with the intent is, to distribute. Even avoids mm -hmm. having somebody else engage in illegal activity. You keep less than an ounce, and, I, and by the way, I'm a little confused about how this ounce came about. You count only those leaves that are part of the marijuana description in the statute, or did you weigh the stock and the branches too? That, that's a good question. They, um, the lab just weighed the leaves, so I would say you, they dried you, them before they did that. Um, I'm not too sure. I mean, I don't even yeah. know what part of it. I assume from reading the statute, they're the only parts that. Um, lead to uh, mood altering are those leaves and i don't think you can smoke them unless they're dry but okay right so thank you for enlightening me but, it wasn't but, the but, stock go ahead. go ahead correct okay thank you justice cordy no i was going to say but when marijuana is weighed at the lab i mean they're often twigs and seeds and everything else in the bag they're all weighed together right they're not do they sort out the seeds and everything before they weigh them at the lab <laughs> That, that's a good question. I know, I know. I believe in this case they just weighed the leaves. <clears throat> but that's, but that's, it wasn't, which it, would it, suggest it wasn't dried, probably. <clears throat> because I think, I think what Justice Cordy is talking oh. about is dried marijuana has a bunch of other stuff yeah. in with it. Right. I, I believe it was just the, the leaves, right, yeah, and that it wasn't dried. Um, but also from a public safety viewpoint, I don't know if, if, if we want individuals cultivating marijuana. I just think back to the... Um, you don't mean quality Rabbits control. and coyotes might be eating it. Who knows what might happen? <laughs> so it's, 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 better for, it's better for us to be purchasing... I mean, I, I don't quite get that point. Is that, is that we would prefer to be importing it from Mexico? Hawaii? I, I just think back to the... Um, it was a search and seizure case and, and a... Um, Fitchburg State, a Framingham State, and when the officers went into the dorm room, they said oh, that yeah. there was a, a light on in, in the closet, and they ended up finding a, a marijuana, uh, that the student was um, cultivating marijuana, and just from a safety I mean, fire hazard? Is fire hazard, right. <laughs> okay. yeah. You can do this except in dorms. <laughs> well, even outside where, it's, you know, if somebody's trespassing, say, a middle school student, high school student, oh, geez, uh, my neighbor, Mr. Jones, has all this marijuana, and now I'm going to take it. So. But, but you still haven't really answered Justice Lang's question, okay. which essentially is, why would a sensible marijuana policy have it that if you possess it as a result of a felony it's a it's a citation civil case and if but if you grow it yourself and there's no felony necessarily involved except your own cultivation of it that that's that's now a felony mm -hmm. i mean you, you have this strange i it's it's a rather peculiar policy to say if somebody commits a felony to give it to you it's a civil citation, but if you grow it yourself uh, in quantities not large enough to sell, then it's that's worse, or that's that's <coughs> a felony. There seems something not terribly sensible about that, and so the question is: Would a sensible marijuana policy incorporate your analysis? I, I think so. Again, I I believe the vote is again envisions the individual maybe down the street at the uh, well maybe at Fenway Park and w with the marijuana on his person, but I don't think they envisioned somebody actually growing it. Because okay, it's, 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 but it's, you still have to answer the question of what's sensible in, in, in view of all this. Let's assume that the voters did not give it as much thought as one would like, but they did 
they passed something because they thought it was a more sensible marijuana policy to take to not criminalize this kind of conduct for all the reasons. But would that not apply here? Is it is it not sensible to criminalize this this cultivation where the amount is below that which would make it an ounce and there was no no evidence of intent to uh, to, to sell? Well, again, going back to the, that, cultivation has always been separate separate from simple possession. Um, so we, we've always considered it a serious crime um, from just simple possession of marijuana. And your argument is that that's this, this statute, this portion of the statute was not amended? Correct. It, it, it was not um, Only repealed. amended Section 34 of the possession statute was the only thing that was actually amended? Yes, Your Honor. Unless the court has any questions, the Commonwealth would rest on its briefs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm David Skeels. I represent the defendant, Kenneth Palmer, in this uh, case. Your Honor, I would suggest that the sensible marijuana policy recognizes the fact that the problem with people using marijuana is where do they get it from? And it, I suggest, specifically discourages people from getting marijuana from dealers, people who sell marijuana. It specifically exempts from decriminalization the sale of any amount of marijuana, no matter how small the amount may be. On the other hand, it does not exempt from decriminalization cultivation of marijuana. And that's very clear from the statute itself. Uh, the cultivation, manufacturing, and selling of marijuana all appear in the same provision of it in, uh, I think it's uh, Section 32A of the 94C of the General Laws. The, obviously, the marijuana statute had in mind the fact that uh, if that the words of the statute itself state that unless specifically provided, in this statute, the punishment of uh, anyone for possession of an ounce or less of marijuana will no longer be criminal. And if uh, the, that had been applied to selling or manufacturing or cultivation without some exemption, then all of those provisions would have been decriminalized. It would have decriminalized manufacturing, it would have decriminalized not only cultivation, but also selling of marijuana. However, that was specifically exempted from the, the selling and the manufacturing were specifically exempted from decriminalization. But and Mr. I, Skeels, what's the difference? This seems to me to be the same argument that you have actually raised before uh, <laughs> in Kiefner. And, um, not that it's not a good argument, just wasn't the one that we adopted. So I'm wondering. Well, let me say what I, I think that this, there is a big difference between this case and the Kiefner case. Uh, the Kiefner case, as I understand it, was limited to the question whether or not possession with intent to distribute had been decriminalized. If it had been decriminalized, the problem is that there probably would have been no way to prosecute anyone for selling small amounts of marijuana, our possession with intent to sell marijuana, small amounts of marijuana, which would have been in direct conflict with the sensible marijuana statute itself, because the sensible marijuana statute itself says specifically that selling of small amounts of marijuana will not be decriminalized. That's very clear from the statute. And if this court had ruled in Kiefner that uh, possession with intent to distribute had for small amounts of marijuana had been repealed, there probably would have been no way to prosecute anyone for sale or possession with intent to sell small amounts of marijuana. So certainly there was a real problem with that argument in the Kiefner case. Now, I think it's, very, it's a very different situation here because the sale of marijuana in small amounts is specifically exempted from decriminalization. At the same time, cultivation of marijuana is not specifically. What does it I say, mean, what does it say specifically about cultivation? 
Well, it says, except as specifically provided by an act, in an act establishing a sensible marijuana policy, the Commonwealth may not impose any criminal penalty on it, anyone for possession of an ounce or less of marijuana. Is it silent on <clears throat> cultivation? Well, it doesn't exempt cultivation, so therefore I would argue that under that language of, that, of the statute itself, of the Sensible Marijuana Act itself, it has been decriminalized because that statute says, unless it's specifically provided by this statute, the, uh, the possession of an ounce or less of marijuana shall not, there no criminal penalties may be imposed. And if you're cultivating marijuana, you're possessing marijuana. I don't see how you can do one without the other. And if the, uh, and same is true of selling and manufacturing. If you possess or sell manu uh, a small amount of marijuana, you're possessing it. And unless the statute had prov specifically provided for the exemption from decriminalization of selling and manufacturing, then selling and manufacturing would have been decriminalized too because they also involve possession of an ounce or of marijuana. That's an element of all three offenses. But manufacturing and selling were not decriminalized. They were specifically exempted from decriminalization. Let's say you persuade us. So what, what would the holding be going forward? How, how much marijuana can a person cultivate? Well, I think it's got to be less than an ounce. It's got to be an ounce or less. So yes. what does that translate into? Well, that translates, I think, into <clears throat> the policy that people who are growing marijuana for their own use, and I, that's the preferred method of, the statute seems to prefer that method as far as obtaining marijuana is concerned. People are growing it for their own use, they're exempt. But people who have a large farm of marijuana plants yeah, so, are, Okay, are, so a large farm wouldn't be good, but how many plants can an individual grow for their own use if, if it's gonna produce less than an ounce? Well, if it produces less than an ounce, then they're not, they're exempt. Right. Uh, but if it produces more than an ounce, I think there's a, they're exempt under the cultivation uh, statute. But if they intend to s distribute the plants that they're growing, even if it's less than an ounce, they're still subject to prosecution. I think that uh, there's a sort of a presumption that if you're growing less than an ounce of marijuana, it's for your own use. But that presumption can be overcome by other evidence. If uh, the fellow has uh, a list of customers or something of that nature, or self. I mean, we can't even figure out how you measure it. So I mean, I, I think the question is, how, how do you, how do you know that you're growing less than an ounce of marijuana? I mean, we don't know whether we're talking about leaves, are we talking about stalks and branches? What are we talking about? Well, I suppose that's the question that has to be answered. Uh, in later uh, cases, because uh, it does raise some problems, I suppose. Uh, the statute, to some extent, already describes marijuana, defines it in the statute. It yes, defines it yes. as not including the stock. So yeah. presumably, um, people who grow for their own use or not would be able to anticipate or would learn to just as they... I, mean, I couldn't tell you, holding in my hand, what if I'm holding an ounce, but presumably people are going to be cautious to not walk around with an ounce as they have done in these cases as they presumably could also be and if they're not cautious enough then then they violated if if that's what we decide is that's what you're suggesting that yes they would that's learn what I'm, to figure I'm it suggesting out? that uh, so would police uh, they have to uh, they anyone who grows more than an ounce as measured by the defined uh, statute is subject to prosecution even though they may not have intended to distribute it uh, that's a strict liability type of offense. But if they grow less than an ounce, then the prosecution has to prove that he intended to distribute it before they're guilty of a criminal offense. That would be uh, my uh, interpretation of the statute. Um, and uh, I think that uh, the whether or not uh, possession of less than an ounce involves a dead plant or a live plant, it doesn't seem to me that it, this should make a, a great difference. Um, I think that uh, the Commonwealth's argument that the only purpose of the um, 
Sensible Marijuana Act was to abolish, uh, to repeal or amend uh, the simple possession statute, uh, which is, I think, Section 34, I think is contradicted by the fact that that's only one section of the Sensible Marijuana Act. Section 5 of the Sensible Marijuana Act actually repealed uh, the uh, simple possession statute. But then Section 2, which is now in 32L, specifically said that notwithstanding any general or special law to the contrary, possession of one ounce or less of marijuana shall not be a criminal offense. So that I think the purpose of the statute was not just to repeal the simple possession uh, statute, or to amend the simple possession statute, I should say, but it was also to cover other situations, such as cultivation, where the general laws actually does punish possession of an ounce or less of, uh, of marijuana. And uh, it was very clear that uh, if uh, cultivation, uh, if manufacturing or a sale is involved, then that hasn't been decriminalized. But because cultivation wasn't ex specifically accepted from the, uh, the law, then it has been decriminalized. Are there any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Thank you very much, sir. We'll take a brief recess.